It's the Extra Time.com podcast. I'm Oshin Langan. This is out a day earlier than usual due to the Ireland match last night. That's if you're listening on Thursday. As well as that, though, we look ahead to the ladies' All Ireland football final between Dublin and Meath, as well as the men's All Ireland final on Saturday week between Mayo and Tyrone. There's only one place to start, though, and that's the 2 1 defeat to Portugal in which one of the world's best players scored two late goals and the referee had a bit of a mare, denying Stephen Kenny's team a stonewall penalty. Ronaldo, it's saved by Bizzuno! What a moment for the 19-year-old! Cross corner, what a moment for the Republic of Ireland and for John Egan! I usually kind of go around the back, but I think Duffy saw someone said just get across the front this time. So just managed to get across the front. The ball was perfect. Uh, glancing header, and it was right in front of uh, my mum as well. So it was, uh, it was special. Ronaldo's header, and he has done it. He just had to. It is a kick in the teeth, and we've had a few, you know, there's no doubt. And uh, it's, a, it's a kick in the teeth. So, but they are, uh, they are terrific in the terrific group of people. Honestly, gutting. Um, we're all gutted inside there, you know. To put in that performance away from home against such a world-class team uh, with one of the best players ever in it, um, you know, we we really felt like there was something there for us tonight. Um, to walk away with nothing is very disappointing. Um, but you know, I suppose if we look back on it. It was, it was a really good performance. Felt like a really good performance. Um, yeah, just just gutted not to get a result. The players, I'm just going for the players. Heroic in there, and which they've left out there. You know, they've just given everything of themselves. So they've been, the players themselves have been heroic. Uh, it's a tough one to lose, but we can't dwell on it. You know. John Egan and Stephen Kenny talking to RTE Sport and the commentary of Rob Hawthorne on Sky Sports of a cruel night in Faro as Ireland battled hard but came away with nothing. And we're joined now by former Ireland, Reading and Cork City midfielder Joe Gamble. Um, Joe, it was both a good night and a bad night. That's right, yeah. No, exa- look, I, I suppose at the end of the day, results matter, so it is a bad night. Um, but the way the way it unfolded and, and the type of performance that the team and the players put into it, you can be very proud. Um even though no one wants uh, a kind of it's a the Chicago love me loser, and um, we don't want that sort of tag. But you're you're playing against a top top, you know, international teams with full of full of caliber players. Um, so we can be very proud, but there's obviously areas that maybe we can look at as well. But I mean, overall, it's, it was a hell of a performance, really. What impressed you about this Ireland team? I think, but bar the penalty, um, because I think we started off that bit of kind of naivety, like. <laughs> It kind of annoyed me a little bit at the start where like we just think that we can play out that easy. I mean, you're not going to get it. You're not going to play out that easy um, against anybody and certainly not away to Portugal. I mean, they must have been rubbing their hands when the scene is playing out so easy at the start. Like My my fear there is when we start playing out like that and even if we do play through the units and we get through their, you know, their, their, striker, their strikers and their midfielders and we do get into those sort of areas where they're dangerous, are we really going to hurt them anyway? Um, because we spent so much, so much energy trying to get there, um, are we gonna are we gonna do enough? Is there enough risk for the reward? Where we where where you notice after about, after that penalty we started hitting Matt uh, Doherty from from direct goal kicks and he won every header and all of a sudden we're 40, 50 yards out the pitch, getting better position, getting better ball for example and in better position and a better attacking position. But we're not so naive to play out. So I think we need to look at that. Steve Kenny needs to definitely look at it. I mean I I understand that. He wants to stick to his principles and he wants to play open the back. If you're going to start the game like that, away from home against such a top opposition, you're going to ask for trouble. Like, uh, like the penalty, I don't think it was a penalty, but why give the referee a decision by being naive and playing that sort of... Not, I'm not saying we can't play, but like you you can't play like that. That You're not playing against an average team here. Like They're going to pounce and they're going to make a make a pay. And, and that's what they did. No, obviously, keep him in a group fantastic. Again, makes a great save, but 
like you know other days you're one nil down and all of a sudden that game could be a whole different game Portugal got, could have got the second win straight off the bat and who knows what the scoreline could have been when you say you can't play out from the back like that and then you were saying earlier on about you know some of the kickouts that went to Matt Doherty is there a way you can mix it up like it seems to be that's what they did when they went to Matt Doherty I just think like you don't do, I don't I just think that you if there's playing over the back and there's playing over the back and you play over the back and the reason you play over the back is you play a better ball forward. That's my that's my thinking of, of it. Like, I mean, we don't play over the back just to look good. I mean, what's the point? Like you you build from the back, so you 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 give your front men or, or midfielders and, and, and front men, your attacking players, better possession of the ball. So it's not necessarily a fight ball, it's not maybe a ball on the channel, maybe it's ball in the feet, maybe it's more intricate play through, playing through midfield, playing through the units as such. But like you're playing out, but where are we really going? Are we really hurting them or are we hurting ourselves? And it just looked like that we were told to play out, we're playing out. And I understand, I heard Steve Kenny say, saying, no, I'm sticking to my principles and I want to play and I want to evolve the team. And that's great. And, and look, I'm full of, and I agree, look, we, we need to evolve a little bit. But like you can't really forget, like we don't have world class centre backs or world class players. We've got very, very good players, don't get me wrong. But we're not world class in a 1v1 situation when we're getting pressed really high and aggress- aggressively. Are we able to get out of that pressure? And play through them, not really, not all the time. Not against Portugal, not in way, not in the first five, ten minutes. Like set the stall up to hit. Maybe if if Doherty is is winning every header from direct goal kicks, just keep hitting him. Why get bored of it? Why get if it works? Don't change it. Like just because it mightn't be easy on the eye, who cares if it's easy on the eye? It, like the result, it's a results business, and we have to get results. So I can understand what he's trying to do, but not at a cost where you're. Your prince was out weighing really like the a, a chance of getting results. Like it's all well and good. Said, oh yeah, we tried to play. Yeah, but you still lost. It doesn't matter if you tried to play. People, at the end of the day, it's about results. We did get in behind Portugal on occasion tonight. Now they dominated the game. They had most of the chances. They had probably plus seventy percent um, possession. But when we did get in behind, how did we do that? Was that through? I won't say playing out from the back, but was that through? an identifiable Kenny style that he has implemented of guys making the runs, using the ball, not just banging it long? A, a little bit. Look, if you ask me in my honest opinion, I thought Portugal were very poor in the first half. I thought they just thought it was a Ronaldo show and they just they came for the party. I didn't think they gave us any respect in the first half and they were just walking around, nonchalant, they pressed a little bit besides the penalty. Um, that pressing what did they really do didn't do anything I just thought they just took over to Grantis and just thought well we're not going to hurt them too much and nonched a little bit and it kind of gave us the opportunity then to to pounce in it and I think we made very good penetrating runs but I think some of the final balls into those areas were fantastic I thought Doherty was excellent I thought Colin balls were excellent when we got into the position as you said could we have really hurt them I think Connolly was a bit, was a bit lax I think he went through the one at once the first step right behind him came across and he didn't know whether to shoot whether to dink the keeper whether to cut it back he just looked a bit lost a little bit and I just think like for us to be for us to maybe not for us to really win these games you get one chance to score or you, you, you got to do a bit more than just you know getting a corner or getting a throw and I thought for Connolly's endeavour fantastic but his quality needs to improve um, I thought Ida again was fantastic work rate but he can be a bit sloppy at times. No, I'm, I'm much critical here, I don't have to say, because I thought they did play really well. But we did get in behind. I thought Coleman got some one or two good chances in, and it was direct. And I thought we, were just, we we kind of went for a little bit, but I also think Portugal were a bit lax. But that's not taking anything from our, from Irish performance. I thought uh, we got forward in numbers. We got in behind them. Could we then make that, you know, the three or four chances? We can, can we score one? You know, can, we, can we get another? Can we, can we score one of those chances? And then obviously... Fantastic set piece that we scored from, um, because in the second half, realistically, we didn't really get in, get in behind him at all because we were defending so much. Because Portugal came out in the second half and and realised, look, listen, we're, we're in for the game here. We we better up the ante a little bit. Conan Byrne put out a tweet after the game. He said, "An outstanding performance, but we cannot let those crosses come into the box unopposed with." the best header of a ball in world football in the area. I'm absolutely gutted for Stephen and the whole squad. I think you'd agree with the second point. What did you make of the first point about those crosses being let in? Yeah, I think McLean's got to stop the first first cross. I think, again, look, listen, fine, fine, fine margins in it, but can he just shuffle his feet across? He wasn't going to beat him on the outside. He was only ever going to get a cross in. Um, 
And then again, you've got to look or look again, you know, critical. Like, can, can someone maybe man mark Ronaldo on the box? He's the only one who probably was going to score in the box anyway, especially the second goal where he peels off the comb and do does any defenders open the body up and look for him and just literally grab him and get near him. So he can't get an easier heading because look, Coleman is probably the smallest man in the pitch, excellent fullback, but isn't going to block Ronaldo on the back stick. It's like that one, that, that video years ago of Evra, when he jumps over, nearly jumps over Evra. Um, is it tough at that stage of a game, Joe, because like, oh, yeah. it, it's easy to sit here and say we should track Ronaldo, but having been on the back foot for as long as they were, it was difficult. Also, you knew, given the way the referee was calling the game, if you touched him at all, he was going down and he was getting a penalty. So can you kind of understand how he was given that bit of freedom in the box, especially for the second header? A hundred percent. I mean, look, at 95 minutes into it. I mean, I, I think he's played an extra minute. Like, lads are out with their feet because they put everything into it. So a hundred percent, I'm not saying, I'm just saying that, like, from a centre from a centre back point of view, the three centre backs there for, for their their smell in danger. So one of them has got to go. Okay, where's Ronaldo? Because realistic, he was the only one that was going to score a header. But again, that's why Martin. That's where maybe the experience comes into it, or maybe that made a nose. But maybe they should have just grabbed him. And I mean, I said grab him, just get near him, so he doesn't get that lever, leverage and that jump. But look, you can't take anything away from him. I mean, the second header was absolute top drawer. Like, I mean, he runs and comes out from an offside position, comes inside. He's actually jumping on his left leg and then he's directing it at an angle into the top corner. I mean, look, it's top drawer. That's why he, he scores 111 goals internationally. Korean. He, he is top drawer. He didn't do any much in the game, but scores two goals and that's why he's there for. That's why he's such um, you know, a, a, an outstanding player. But yeah, you can. I mean, of course. I mean, look, it's the dying minutes of the game. You're absolutely exhausted. The heat as well. You put so much into it. You just want to cling on to and get a point uh, and, and then you get absolute sucker punch. Like, but... You, you, go, you go back to it, you, you, you got to stop the cross somehow, um, but again, easier said than done. It, it would be particularly bad if we can't build on this. You know, it's, it's, it's a bad result in a sense that we were leading for so long and then got caught at the end for two goals. But if we don't use this as a platform and get something against Azerbaijan and then hopefully Serbia, who we have at the Aviva at the weekend and then early next week, that makes it even worse, doesn't it? It is right, but I, I have to say, right, and I'm not going to critic it out, whatever. But it's a different type of game and different type of uh, attitude when you don't have the ball, and when you're in that low block, mid block, and you're and you're and you're kind of counter attacking. Right, that suits Irish football. That suits the players we have because the skill set and the technique you need to actually have the ball and break down the opposition is totally different. Like what Portugal did, all the possession, everyone knew they had a lot of possession, or their team knew they'd have the possession. Their home team, top drawer team. They're always going to have the ball. So the emphasis is on them to come out and beat us right from the get-go. They have the players to do that because they're technically gifted. They, they are. Like they're, they're, you go through all their squad. I mean, they're not playing in the Premier League with the best teams in the league. And There's a reason why they're all playing Man City or Liverpool, or Chelsea's or Barcelona. Rams, whatever, you know what I mean? Not, there's a reason why. So for us then to go out and play Azerbaijan and to be on the front foot and to create things and to, and to be dominant and have possession, you're taking a whole... It's a whole different mentality and it really shows what type of players we actually have, how good we are technically, how good we are to know, have yeah. the ball and know the pressure on for you to break them is down. Is this kind of an so even bigger me, test? Of St- yeah, is this in a kind of an even bigger, bigger test of Stephen? Because he's expected to win it. They should have the possession. They're at home. And this is where he can implement his game plan as he sees it. I think, yeah, I think it's a way bigger test because no, you're asking the Irish players and the team to have more possession, be on the front foot more. And it really will show how good technically and what kind of skill set our players actually have. Because it's much easier to defend in a low block, mid block, and then to break on teams. And yeah, you're starting possession. And when you do, you, when you do get it, can you gain possession? Or can you attack like tonight? We look good, we look solid, we look compact. right? And then when we broke, we did, we did get in behind boards. We did cause them a, a, a fair few problems, more so than what we probably thought we would have. And the players were excellent in that sense. Can we then capitalise on that and score one or two goals? We went through that. But no, you're asking players, OK, now you're going to have a lot of the possession. Now you're going to have the pressure of breaking the team down. You're going to have fans on board. You're going to have that pressure. How good are we to know, step it up and break teams down? Because it's much, more, much, much more difficult. Like, you can ask a good player to be solid and compact and when you get it, give it simple, right? And you might look good. But when you're asking players like Portugal to have all the position, right, break down a stubborn defence, constantly knocking the door constantly knocking the door get around the outside and get in behind them all the things you need to do to break teams down we don't have that in abundance so we're asking now the Irish team to step up the level and, and play with sort of a technique and skill level that 
high teams need to play to break teams down. And I don't think, to be honest, I know you're saying Stephen Kenny will implement this and his style of play and, and him as a manager. It comes down to the players. I think we're far too fixated on what the manager needs and what the manager or he doesn't or the manager isn't able to do or he's not cutting. He's not. It's the players we have at your disposal. The players that we have at our disposal are the players we have. They're younger. They're 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 in more inexperience. They're learning the international football. They get more caps, more minutes. So it's going to take them time to progress. Yeah. I think it's the players that need to go out and do it. No doubt, Stephen Kenny would drill him in about the style of play, the phase of play, that what we need to do when we have a hair. Keith Andrews, I know, will be big in that. I know all the coaches. He's a kid. He's a great background staff, and he's and he's a very good manager himself. But it comes down to the players that you have. Can they deliver on the big stage with pressure? No, you have the ball. No, what can you do? How, te- how technically how good are you? Are you? T- is, are we good in tight spaces? Don't know. Can we do is where there's, there's a low block where Azuban, if they come and they do what we did, are we able to break them down? Would you look at an Irish team? Would we be able to do what Portugal did to us in terms of having all the ball and keep going and keep going and, and, and a bit of magic from someone? I don't know. It's it's I, I don't know I, I I really don't know but yeah. we need to have the other side of the game which is much more difficult breaking in zone in possession requires an awful lot more than sitting back what we did tonight no even though we were fantastic I'm not saying anything about tonight but the next step can be building it it's not as easy just saying we have to build it we have to get these results it's a different type of game no what's no see what no see what we got so would you make changes for the game against Azerbaijan either shape or personnel-wise, could, could you see him maybe going with someone like Daryl Horgan from the start? Because he's the kind of player who can get on the ball, he can create things, he can he can make things happen. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure he, he can and he would if we give, give him the opportunity. But on the other side of it is, who do you, who do you not play after tank performance? It's, it's very difficult to say, well, look, you're the next thing in sports, but look, you know, I'm, I'm going to go a different way. I and mean, maybe he might go a different way, but I think those players that play tonight, one foot more, maybe a wing back, give a higher, maybe look for a three four three formation, or you know, change it up, change it up a little bit. But I think ultimately, um, the players that play deserve the opportunity to go and you know flip it and uh, at home and see can we get the get a positive result. But again, I, I don't know. I, I ultimately, I think he'll stick with the same team. Be honest. Okay, Joe Gamble, former Ireland international. Thanks for joining us on the Extra Time dot com podcast. Thanks, Roshi. My pleasure. UEFA qualified coach Joe Gamble there. It is the extratime.com podcast. Dublin look to seal a fifth TG Cahar All-Ireland Ladies football title in a row this Sunday when they take on Meath in Crow Park. After the semi-final win over Mayo, manager Mick Bohan explained what drives them on year after year. Well, it's it's funny. I was thinking, I went for a cycle during the weekend and this was coming through my head. The first year was about answering the three finals they'd lost. That was, it didn't matter to us how we did it it was just about trying to be successful because we had a group of players there who were gone finished they just couldn't go through it again uh, and that included the likes of Sinead Ahern, Goldie Neve McAvoy where would we be without them Lindsay they were nearly all on their last legs and now look at them five years later and the, you know they're in another All-Ireland final the second year they had to answer had the fact they'd won they, they weren't a one year wonder and they still hadn't beaten Cork that was that was an easy motivation all of a sudden you were looking at three in a row you couldn't leave that one behind you how often does it come in your lifetime because ultimately three means you have to win one and two so then you were at three then COVID came and with the challenge of COVID could we manage a team through for everybody for the most testing of times and then it became about minding the group and using football as a, as a source to do that and we took immense pride at a last year's competition because you know minding your camp keeping them safe from COVID we two cases of COVID both from who were in the medical services and both picked up in hospitals, but they kept it from the camp. Uh, and the discipline to do that, like continuously mask and sanitize and temperature gauges, you know, not spending any more than time needed indoors, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a serious commitment to a group. So that was a massive, you know, um, quest for us during COVID. And then all of a sudden we found ourselves with a situation where we were going for five. Like, so they came so quickly uh, on top of each other, but everyone brought a different challenge. And this year, you know, the start, like Noel, 
probably as she you know she probably would have stayed if we'd have pushed her but it was a matter of the profession she was in was just so demanding and you know they've been such a good group all of a sudden Hannah Terrell after a conversation a year ago picks up the phone and we find her in our midst and what a lift to the group she's been um, the other g- girls as well Lindsay Sinead, Siobhan McGrath all had decisions to make whether they give it one more go and that's what they've done and look at look at look what they've done out in that arena It is the ExtraTime.com podcast. And as promised on Monday, we are going to focus more on Tyrone now following last weekend's All-Ireland semi-final win over Kerry. And of course, we're going to look ahead to the final against Mayo, which is on September 11th. AIB GAA Ambassador Colm Kavanagh of Moy, Tiernan Nogue, and of course, formerly of Tyrone, joins us ahead of that All-Ireland Senior Football Championship final as long-time rivals Mayo and Tyrone uh, meet in a mouth-watering final to round off hashtag the toughest knockout season of summer football. Colm, I don't think this is the pairing that many people would have predicted for the final. Oh, Tyrone, from Tyrone point of view, we expect, we expect it. Uh, no, it's it, it, definitely not, Ashton. I think the... I think the... the... the, the most people around Ireland would have been expecting the, the Dublin Dublin Kerry final. Um, but look, football is a uh, can be sometimes a very crazy sport. And look, we we were we were sort of um, we sort of enjoyed uh, two really really enthralling semi-finals that went to the wire in extra time. So um, probably the two underdogs came through, and that sort of siege mentality seen them seen them over the line. So yeah, it's it's set up now a, a definitely a mouth-watering final. You've had a couple of days to think about it and maybe watch it back. What did you make of that Tyrone Kerry semi final? Uh, people talked before the game probably that that from, from a Tyrone perspective how Tyrone were going to win and what they needed to do. And people talked about bringing chaos and bringing madness and ambush and all that sort of piece. And you know they're fairly loose buzzwords, but in essence, that effectively what is that's that's what happened. Tyrone did bring that chaos. They brought that intensity. They brought that aggressiveness to the to, the, to their game. Whether it was you know last ditch tackling, you know being ruthless in front of goals, you know watching McKenna's two goals, and especially where you know the, the easy option would have been to, to to knock the ball over the bar, and and you know a point was a good score then at that stage and that. So you know Tyrone did bring that sort of that that madness to the game, and you know Kerry did as well to a certain extent. Um, but I think you know obviously the that aggressiveness and that sort of intensity that Throne played with. Um, I hadn't seen anything. It's the first time watching a watch. I actually didn't get the game. I had to watch it on TV um, in live times. But I, uh, it's the first time I was jumping off a chair, just watching and really, you know, getting really excited about a game of football. So it, 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 it had everything. It had some good play. It had some really poor play. It had, you know, it just, it, it, brought, it sort of brought, brought me back a wee bit to go, geez, football is actually enjoyable to watch because I think the last number of years it's been, you know, it's been the Dublin show and it's been fairly, you know, they're, they're fairly methodical and that. So the, it's nearly like a breath of fresh air watching two teams, you know, four teams effectively just go at it. And, you know, it uh, it was, yeah, excitement back in football. The big question is, can they replicate that against Mayo in the final? Because they were going into the semi-final. And again, you can please correct me if I'm wrong here, but they were going into the semi-final, maybe with a bit of a chip on the shoulder, maybe with a bit of extra drive, maybe... You know, they wanted to prove the doubters wrong because even in the best of circumstances, they would have been underdogs. Then you throw in the delay and all the stories and talk around that and it maybe gave Tyrone a bit of a, a again, victim complex or just that, that chip on the shoulder. And, and then, you know, just these games, sometimes they just take off and they get a bit crazy and it's hard to do that a second time. So can they replicate it? Do they need to replicate it in the final? I, th- I think they do. Uh, you know, obviously the the Kerry game having the having the, you know getting a heavy you know been handed a heavy defeat up in Killarney. Um, you know that probably played into the hands nicely, and obviously with the COVID, um, the COVID impact and the delaying games and the sort of everything, all the chaos that went around that. So they definitely had a point to prove from you know from that. And you know, I I felt before the Kerry game that you know that they would have no problem having that sort of motivation to to try and deliver a performance, but. You know, you've got to remember here that it is an All Ireland final, and you know Tyrone have had a very poor record against Mayo in the big days over the last you know last ten years. So, um, I do think they'll be you know they'll be able to get back up for it. And it's it's a, I say it's an All Ireland final at the end of the day, and 
you know, both teams I think will still will need to sort of replicate the the performances that they they, they sort of done that they proved in the in the semi final because um and if they do it'll be a cracking game of football because as I said there, there's there was there was everything you know obviously even in the in the Dublin Mayo game where Mayo were you know weren't were fairly well out of it in the first half and then to sort of come back in in the second half and you know uh, that sort of rawness and that intensity uh, I think both teams will, will be able to replicate that and will be able to bring that into the final and if they do you know we're in for a cracker no doubt You mentioned there that Tyrone don't have a good record against Mayo on the big days why do you think that is? It's very hard to pinpoint in terms of putting, putting it down to one thing like you know we haven't had a good record against any of the big, so-called big teams in the last number of years we haven't beat a Kerry Mayo Dublin since I'm not even sure what year Um, so it's it's very hard to do that and sense of you know I've been part of them teams it's not as if we're we're sitting there going geez well we can't beat this team on a big day you know you go out every year thinking that you can and I do think this year is the you know part and parcel of the change of setup you know a couple of, a couple of new players coming in and the guys just looked that wee bit freer and that you know that 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 wee bit more willing to take risks in the big day that's I think. If you look back at Strong's performances in the 2018 final and um, even against Mayo in was it 2016 and Kerry in 19, like we're like we were in them games, we you know we 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 had some good periods of play, but we 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 ultimately I don't think we brought that craziness or that talked about that chaos and that intensity. I don't think we did. I think we had no plan like, B. And when you say the chaos and the intensity, does that mean? If you're on your own 45 defending and doing your job, as all footballers and all teams have to do, even if you're like a corner forward, you all have to drop back. But does the chaos and the intensity mean you are allowed to break forward if you think it's on? You're allowed to take a shot on? Because like, I'll give you one example, and it's not even from the last two games. It's from the Ulster semi-final against Donegal. Conor McKenna took on a couple of shots from awkward angles. Now, he can land them. There's no doubt about that. But he happened to miss these. But he took them on, and no one seemed to be shouting at him. No one seemed to be frustrated that he took them on. And, and even though he missed, they were like, okay, that was still the right thing to do. I, th- I think that to, that to a certain degree, where you know there, there are taking more risks. I, I, I always have sort of highlighted the likes of I know Paddy Hamsey, for example, has kicked a, look, a couple of balls in the last few games, which was probably a wee bit aimless. But you know, you can see what they're trying to do. You can see the point where they were they were actually willing to take them risks. I know for a fact that like, we would never have done that in the past. Like we would never have took them risks. It would have been fist pass laterally. It would have been you know, very methodical. Don't, like, And the reason probably for that was the guys were nearly afraid to get read up in a, in a video analysis on the Tuesday night for doing something like that. So th- there definitely there definitely has been that sort of freedom. It seems to be that freedom of the guys who are going, look, lads, go out and play your ball. There is, there, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you know, you're going to have problems. But, you know, ultimately you'll do more things right than than wrong. So that just along, also alongside the, the piece that, like, even missing tackles and stuff like that there, like guys are going out and, you know, we would have been fairly comfortable in our setups and defensively where we were, you know, we we're moving in systems and styles and that was okay to a certain degree, but it nearly, it nearly, because you were so comfortable at times, it nearly led us after that you lost your intensity, you lost that sort of, that rawness where you're just going to go out and I'm just going to meet him and I'm going to take the ball off him. And like you've seen at the weekend, Kieran McGeary, I think the first 20 minutes had maybe two turnovers. You know, he was just going and being aggressive with guys, taking that chance. And like there was there was just as easy that somebody stepped Kieran McGeary and went inside and maybe put over the bar. But they were willing to take them sort of risks. And, you know, but I just, we wouldn't, I wouldn't have associated with Throne over the last number of years. And from what you're seeing, are they still taking the risks? But at the same time, like if you've got, three guys bombing on, you'll still have a number of guys back. So it's not like they're going totally, let's all press up. There's a mix of what you were doing and what you're trying to do now. There definitely is. There's definitely elements. You can see even whenever Toronto had the black cards the weekend where they they they, they said, right, well, Kerry, come on ahead. You're going to come, come on top of us. We'll, just, we'll sit here and we'll wait for you to come and we'll see you can just break it down. And ultimately, Kerry did struggle whenever they did do whenever Toronto did do that. I remember back to... Was it nineteen as well when we done that. Uh, certainly, we done that the first half. Or Tron or Kerry were completely didn't know what to do. You know, we were cruising and and that's so. But they were able to. The difference between the Tron team now than then was that the Tron know now, like seemed to know now we're okay. We can sit back for a while, but then we can go and press. We can go back and start pressing and have the pitching in and you know lead lead to higher turnovers up the field and you know ultimately get more scores. While back then it was more. We were trying to do that to a certain degree, but it just didn't work. You know, we had that mentality of sit back, sit back, sit back. And ultimately, when teams got ahead of us, we couldn't sit back anymore, but we still didn't know. We didn't really know how to go and win a game. So I think this is sort of with a new setup and players and that bit more risk free. I think they're, they're able to do that. It's definitely evident that they're able to do that slightly better than they have done.
I've almost addled myself thinking about what kind of game this could be because as you mentioned, to roll now, they can press forward and they can run on and they can get forward, but also when they need to, they can be clever and drop back. Mayo are kind of the same, aren't they? So I'm not sure will this be an incredibly open game or will, or will this be an incredibly tight game or if these teams are actually capable of being tight given what we've seen from them so far. Well, Tyrone certainly this year, but Mayo over the last number of years. Yeah, I think, and I suppose teams have looked at that for the last, since Dublin started to win the other, 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 all Ireland's is you, people talked about the balance and how do you get the balance right between that, you know, that defence and attack and, We've never been able to get it right, so there there is sort of a pace where the both teams will try, and I could see it early on where both teams will go for it. They'll try and get a lead in each other. They'll they'll, they'll go gung ho, and there'll be there will be spaces and there will be opportunities to score. Um, but the, the games, watching the games this year, especially where it have been, it has both teams, both Mayo and Tyrone, have had everything where they. There's periods in the game where they're just going going at it, and then there's periods in the game they're sitting back. So, I, I do think that there there it'll be it'll have a ring. I do think it'll be like I said, you know, people can't account for black cards or red cards and all that. So I think depending on how the game sort of pans out, you know, that'll dictate the you know how aggressive or how how much teams push up and whatnot. The kickouts for me would be fairly important, fairly um, important. Uh, like thrown, I don't think thrown won any of Kerry's kickouts. Uh, if I'm right, maybe in the stats on that, like I think Kerry won all their kickouts, but. They're win them in the you know from the from the cornerbacks out, so it'll just be interesting from that point of view. But Mayo you know, do, Mayo don't mind kind of carrying it into contact, whereas Kerry seemed a bit caught by it, so that'll be perhaps a bit of a difference. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, Kerry, whenever Tron did set a wee bit, and you know, in terms of giving them the kick out of time, it was, I don't know, I don't think they were probably intentionally giving them the kick out unless they had the blue, you know during the black yards, they probably were, but. I don't think they were intentionally giving it, but if they were giving it to them, they were happy to take, give it to them in the cornerback position. And Kerry, you were sort of taking Kerry's kick pass and game out where, you know, they weren't able to, you know, if Kerry win the ball in 45, 50 metres, they're all automatically looking for that kick pass in while you give it to Jason Foley at the back or whoever it was. And they didn't have that option, but you had to run it out and very slow. And, with, you know, it, it didn't really suit while I think Mayo were a bit more comfortable doing, you know, mixing it up. So it, it'll be an interesting one from that tactical side of how, you know, I think Toronto, like, I think Toronto will try and will have to try and sort of go after Mayo's kickouts and, and and force them to, to put it out the pitch like so. It'll just be interesting. I was looking at your starting fifteen from a couple of years ago, the All Ireland final against Dublin, and I was speaking to someone who's a well known coach, well known uh, inter county manager, and he said to me because we were talking about this, it counts for an awful lot that so many of those guys have been to an All Ireland, and 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 that's a big deal. Would you agree with that? And if so. How does it benefit the fact that so many guys have been there? Okay, they haven't won it, but they've been there. They're, they've experienced All Ireland final day. There's a couple of points in that. One being obviously the the build up and the whole excitement. And I know it's only a two week build up now at this point, like just typically maybe four weeks or whatever it is. Like so, it's quite the, the, that sort of build up piece. You know, the guys have been through it. They'll you know people say about ah, oh, we'll not be reading the papers or not be seeing stuff online. You have to in this day and age. You don't. You can't get away from it. You can't see yourself. Do you read the papers in the build up and see stuff? I, well, I, don't, or... I, don't, I don't read. I read a bit online. Yeah, yeah. like I, I definitely did. Like uh, you know, people. Anybody that tells you, oh, I've just been able to block that out of the thing is telling you a lie. Like, and maybe very rarely an exception, but you know, seeing you're you're obviously going to see stuff and whether it's good, bad, or whatever. But you know, they've already been through that a lot of them, and you know, they know what's what to expect in that regard. Um, in terms of the actual football and tactics, is massive too because we like I say I'm rewinding to the 2018 final whenever we. You know, we did sort of the wheels came off a wee bit. We were five one up, and we started to kick. We actually were five one up, and I think we had two or three chances, and we kicked shots from the corner flag. And um, you know, I remember just thinking at the time, we need to be nailing these if we're going to be ahead at the end. And then Dublin took over and sort of, you know, obviously wiped us in the end of it. Like, but having that experience is massive, I think, because they'll know how to deal with setbacks. They'll be planning for the setbacks. They'll be planning for the, you know, what if somebody, what if Kieran McGeer gets a black card, or what if somebody gets a red card, or what if Mayo score a goal early on? What do we do? And I think like we probably weren't set up like that the last time. Uh, you know, I, I don't think we planned too much. You know, what if Dublin hit us with a goal, or what if what you know? I think this time, you know, no, no one's on the lads individually and how they prepare. They'll be feeding that back into the you know from the players. We probably feeding back into the management as much as the management feeding the players in this because uh, they've been through it in the recent times. So, and I think the, given the current management setup, the way it's sort of structured, that they'll be very open to. The players' opinions and how this, you know, what they should be planning for. So, I think that'll be a massive, uh, it'll be a massive plus one that a lot of the guys have been through. There's, there's probably not a not a not, not that many guys who are going to be experiencing it for the first time. Um, so, 
you know, it definitely will lend itself to in a, in a positive way, uh, more so than a negative way, because it, they'll be able to see what, um, you know, what can happen and, you know, how to plan for it. I was about to ask your prediction, but then I realized that's probably a silly question to ask a Tyrone man who played with many of the, who played with most of these players who are on the panel. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it with this one. What kind of game do you think it'll be? I, I do think it'll be fairly, um, I do think it'll be fairly open. I do think there'll be, I think both sides will go to go to win the game. Uh, you may see periods of periods of play where, you know, I think that's every team at the moment. Like, they're, they're, depending on how the games go, and will revert back in a wee bit. You know, men behind the ball and whatnot. But I do think you'll you'll go, you'll you'll see two teams that who will go and try and shoot the lights out and, and try and get ahead early and really put a stamp on the game. And then I'll just I think, given what I've seen in the semi final, the life. You know, the, the game will take a life of its own and you, you will see a bit of madness. You'll see, you know, balls being driven in. You'll see mistakes. Um, but ultimately, I'm hoping that uh, the drone can minimise the mistakes and come through the right side of it. AIB GAA Ambassador Colm Cavanagh of Moy, Tiernan Ogan, of course, formerly of Tyrone. Thanks for joining us ahead of the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship final. As long-time rivals Mayo and Tyrone meet in a mouth-watering final to round off hashtag the toughest knockout season of summer football. Cheers. That's it for the Extra Time podcast. We're back on Monday with a look back on Ireland's clash with Azerbaijan and we look ahead to the meeting with Serbia. Both of those games on at the Aviva. We'll also have former Mayo star Shami O'Shea on the All-Ireland Final. We'll have reaction to the Ladies All-Ireland Final and we'll have our usual SSE Electricity League roundup complete with reaction from around the grounds. We'll also have more on Katie Taylor's world title defence and we'll have more on the Paralympics. As always, if you want to get in contact, you can do so via Twitter on at Extra Time News, at Oshin Langan, or you can get me on email oshin at oshinlangan.com, an email that is, uh, that is as egotistical as it sounds. Until Monday, take care.